Welcome to Daily Devotional of June 7th. My name is Maureen Chung. The Bible passage today is Exodus chapter 16, verse 2 to 16, and the title is Unhealthy Discontentment. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we set around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, and in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? that you should grumble against us. Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight, you will eat meat, and in the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. In the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread of the Lord has given you to eat. And this is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer of each person you have in your tent. Cravings. Is it just about food? Or can people crave for material possessions or immaterial things like power and fame? A rock band once sang, I can't get no satisfaction. Even at the height of their wealth and fame, they were honest about their dissatisfaction in life. Indeed, craving knows no end. After the Hebrews left Egypt, the land of their slavery. They were en route to the promised land of milk and honey as a free nation. But the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron because they did not have meat to eat in the desert. They had only left Egypt a month and a half ago when their last meal was the Passover meal of lamb. They grumbling, their grumbling went like this. If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. In Numbers chapter 11, verse 4 to 6, on another occasion, they grumbled too. The rabble with them began to crave other food, and again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat, 
We'll remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, marlins, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. As slaves under oppression, I doubt that they really sat around pots of meat and ate all they wanted. Later, they added fish and vegetables and herbs to their list of cravings. They exaggerated the level of comfort in Egypt while they forgot the hardship they endured as slaves. They overstated their present danger. They were nowhere near starvation even now. In grumbling against Moses and Aaron, they were grumbling against God, borrowing a phrase from Paul. Their God is their stomach and their mind is on earthly things. Taken from Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. Whatever controls you becomes the God in your life. What can we say? The more popular videos on YouTube are the ones about food and cooking. The more popular shows on TV are the cooking and baking shows. These are clean entertainments for sure. But in developed countries, we are food obsessed. While underdeveloped countries, they suffer food insecurity. But our grumblings may not be any less because cravings have no end. God is kind and gentle towards the Israelites. He gives them bread from heaven, one day at a time, to meet their needs. But on the sixth day, they can gather food enough for two days, since they are to observe the Sabbath by pausing from work on the seventh day. Early in the morning, after the dew is gone, flakes appear on the desert floor. They collect these to make bread for their consumption. At first, they said to each other, What is it? In their language, it sounds like manna. So it was called manna from then on. God's test is this. If anyone gathers more than his need and keeps it until the next day, it becomes smelly with maggots. God wants them to trust him for their daily needs. As their original grumbling was about the lack of meat, God also sends them quail in the evening. The other expected outcome is that they will know that it is the Lord God who has supplied them with all their needs. What have I learned from this? There is a difference between needs and wants. Yes, God is faithful in supplying us our needs, but he's not obligated to satisfy us with all our wants. For example, God gave them quail, but didn't give them fish or vegetables or herbs. God does not indulge us with our cravings. Contentment with what God gives us is good. We thank him and celebrate his generosity. There is a healthy discontentment, though, when we seek to improve and grow in our walk with God. We want to draw closer to God. But unhealthy discontentment can turn into greed when we lust after the things of the world. When material possessions or immaterial power and fame occupy, occupy our heart and mind, we are on the way to idolatry. At this time, we should go back to the basics and live a simple life. What will give us true satisfaction? Jesus Christ, the true bread from heaven. Pay attention to the words of Christ as recorded in John chapter 6. Verse 32, Jesus said to them, Verily, very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Verse 33, for the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life 
to the world. Verse 35. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. In verse 48, again, I am the bread of life. Verse 49, your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. Verse 50, but here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. And verse 51, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Verse 58. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. We can make this comparison. A. Manna sustains life for the moment on earth. Jesus sustains life for eternity. B. Eating manna will satisfy hunger for a while. Then a person will go hungry again. But having Christ Jesus will bring satisfaction forever. And he or she will never go hungry again. C. All who ate manna in the desert died. Those who consume and internalize Jesus will live forever. Eating Jesus is hard to imagine, but internalizing God's word is easier to understand. Moses explains later in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Having God's word imprinted in one's heart and mind, having the living word, Christ Jesus, in one's life, having the Holy Spirit telling us, telling us how to live, we are en route to heaven. This is true contentment indeed. Pray with me. Father, thank you for sending Jesus, the true bread of life from heaven. You have satisfied my longings and cravings. I am contented with my situation and want nothing more. What I need, you will provide. I trust in you. I therefore rejoice without grumbling. Daily I look up to you for a word of knowledge so that I may pass it on to others. If my spiritual well runs dry, there will be nothing to give. But you are my daily bread. You keep on speaking and illuminating. So I proceed in faith and obedience. Oh Lord, life is full when I have you. Praise your holy name. Amen. Thank you for joining me in prayer and in meditation. And may God bless you. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.